Okay, waterproofing balconies it can be quite tricky. Uh, they're often tiled, um, some aren't, but mostly they are. And then people often ask us, Paul, can we come in here and put a membrane over top of those existing tiles? Obviously, it's cheaper to do that because you don't have to remove the tiles and everything else that's underneath it. The danger here is that the substrate, being the tiles themselves, needs to be sound. It has to be, it's critical that it's, it's sound because if you go putting any sort of membrane over the top of loose and drummy tiles, drummy being they're not bonded correctly and if you tap on them they actually make a drumming sound, that's why it's called drummy. The, if you try to put a membrane over the top of that, there is a very, very good chance that it's going to come off. Um, the tile will come away with the membrane and in doing so it will tear the membrane. Even a highly flexible membrane can still be damaged by these sort of occurrences. So we, we tend to recommend against putting membranes over the top of tiles. And there are some minor specific cases where we'll do it, but only a few. Generally, the, the balcony should be stripped right back to zero. Go right back to bare bones. Now that can be right back to the, to the actual structure, um, which if it's a very bad, has been leaking very badly over some years, this is the way to go because you can check the structure and as certified builders, we can actually do that. We can check the structure, make sure that it's not rotted out there's been a number of balcony collapses in, in recent times and, and unfortunately some deaths. So this is something that needs to be checked thoroughly. If there's damage, we'll replace that damage and as registered builders we can do that. Uh, once, it's, uh, we can, once that's done, we can rebuild the whole balcony from the ground up and we usually use more modern materials that are available on the market today, which is called a sky on board and that's a, a really top notch uh, base to work from. So once that's down, we then apply a membrane uh, we use, we're enforcing materials in, the, in our membrane to make sure it's super strong. Then you're often a screed will be applied over the top of that membrane to get the levels so the, the water will run to the drainage system below the tiles, not on top of the tiles. This is a crucial part of, tile, of tiling. The biggest misconception for tiled surfaces is that water runs off the top of the tiles and goes to the drainage. It does that, but that's not the critical part of it. It also moves its way through the grout lines because even a freshly grouted uh, balcony will shed water for a period of time, then the grout will shrink, it'll get minor tiny cracks, but the water will seep into those cracks, go down underneath the tile, hit the membrane, which is there, and this is a crucial part of this formula because we put a membrane on the bottom, we put the screed down, then we put a membrane over the top of that screed, then the tiles are fixed to that membrane. This allows the water then to flow through the tiles and this is, a, this is crucial, and everybody needs to really pick up their ears on this. It does flow through the tiles. They might laugh at it and say, oh no, you need silicon, that'll stop that. All the rest of it, it doesn't work, I can guarantee you this. Over 35 years of experience, I've seen so many of these jobs where people and really well qualified builders stand there and talk blue in the face, mate, it will not leak through the tiles. And I can tell you, it does. All right, so I'll argue to the point, uh, wherever I need to, this is the way I'm going to do it. So, the, the whole issue is that membrane underneath the tiles needs to be substantial membrane, of course. It needs to be, direct, uh, the water hitting that membrane needs to flow through to the drainage system. That might be puddle drains, strip drains, whatever it might be. It depends on the design. But once the water slowly, slowly works its way through to that drain, it'll, it'll go away, of course. Now, whilst it's doing that, that membrane needs to be able to support water. And that, when I say support water, I don't mean hold it up. I mean be able to cope with that water over a long period of time. Because as you can imagine, by the time that water works its way through the grout lines, gets through the adhesive, and it does work its way through the adhesive, the adhesive needs to be the right adhesive so it can support that water. Again, it's got, it's got to be a submersible type mem uh, adhesive. This will then allow the adhesive to remain intact and not re-emulsify, which I see many, many times, and that's the white stuff coming up through the grout lines. Uh, the actual adhesive breaks down with, with water. The, um, the water then moves its way through to the membrane. It's sitting on that membrane for a very long time. And if you grab a bucket of, uh, of uh, membrane, or you look at a lot of membranes off the shelf, you'll read the label and say, this is not for ponding water. This is a crucial part of waterproofing. Ponding water often destroys membranes. Now, you might say, ah, it's a waterproofing membrane. How can it destroy it? Well, it does. It's not designed to hold water. You must have a membrane that holds water. Liquid rubber is holds water. It's, do, it's designed for ponds, swimming pools, reservoirs, and the like. It's designed to actually contain water. And this is a major part of why we use this material. Uh, 
the water then slowly, slowly, slowly works its way down to the drainage points. The membrane stays intact because it's suitable, the adhesive stays intact because it's suitable. Of course the tile's made of a you know, fired clay, so that's not going to destruct uh, too readily. So uh, this, is, this is the waterproofing system and it's crucial to waterproofing.